In this video, we're going to go ahead and walk through how to set up your base on the CNC. So we're going to go ahead and start off in Inventor, and I'm just going to open up my base file first. Uh, whenever I am working on making these files into a type for a specific machine, I do always like to open that IPT first, just because it kind of loads it and gets it all ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and do a new, so file new, and we're going to create a new drawing. And just use that top template right there. Now in our new drawing, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of both the border and the ANSI blocks. So I'm going to select those over on this model menu here on the left hand side and delete them. That way I can have just a blank sheet of paper. Now this sheet of paper is rather large. I'm going to go ahead and edit sheet one by right clicking on it. Go down to edit sheet and change this from a size D to a size A paper. Then I'm gonna come up here and click on this base button. Now this is the nice thing about having opened my IPT of my base earlier. Um, it is now the first file that gets loaded. I do wanna double check and make sure that that scale is one to one and then click okay. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and do file and export as a PDF. And then we are going to open it into Aspire. So Marshall base PDF is what I'm going to name it. And then we'll come down here to our start menu, uh, not on the remote desktop, and we will scroll down to my applications and load Aspire. Now, since we are headed to the CNC, it is very important that when we create our new file, we do set up our material to the actual size of our wood. The wood that you are getting is going to be four inches wide and five inches tall. So it is a rectangle. It should be taller than it is wide and it is a quarter of an inch thick. We'll double check that the zero position is on the material surface and the datum position is that bottom left corner. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. In this screen, rather than opening a bitmap, we're actually going to import a vector. So when we save something as a PDF, it actually saves it as a vector. So we will open up that PDF and import that into here. Now, the nice thing about doing it as a PDF and importing that as a vector is that it is automatically the perfect size. If you all remember when we set this up, it should have been about 20 millimeters tall. So if I've got the entire thing selected, I can see the height down here. And if I pop over into Google and I Google search 0.7875 millimeters to inches. We get 20 millimeters. So it is the exact correct height, which is fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and move this to as close to the center of this rectangle as we can. That way, when we get to the CNC, we still have plenty of room on the top and bottom corners to place our clamps. Now, with everything selected, there is one very important step that we've learned to do, uh, which is going to be to join our open vectors. So under here in the edit objects, it's down on this bottom row. You hover over it, it says join. Now, when we do that, you might need to change the tolerance a little bit. My tolerance is at 0 0.002. And you can see that I currently have six open vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and join those vectors. And then if I select it again, I now have three closed vectors and zero open vectors, which is what I want. So now I'm going to go ahead and deselect everything and select just the outside. And we're going to go ahead and make our toolpaths. Now with these toolpaths, uh, when we previewed them in class, we previewed engraving toolpaths. We're actually going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be doing some profiles and some pockets. So our profile toolpath is going to be for the outside outline. And we are going to make sure that our machine vector is going to be on the outside right. We're going to select actually a different bit type. So we're going to be using a quarter inch end mill. And for our cut depth, we are going to cut most of the way through, but not all the way through our material. So you will still need to do a little bit of hand tooling after this. So heading over to the saws. So we can set this to 0.125 or even 0.175. It's actually where I'm going to go ahead and set it. Um, so we'll get most of the way through, but not all the way through. As we scroll down, we're going to call this profile one. And we're going to calculate 
when we preview this toolpath, we should just see that nice outline. And now the nice thing about this is, is that what's left here in the middle is the exact size that we will need. So when we're all done, we will cut away the excess and we will have that exact size. Now in order to get the circles, we're going to go ahead and switch back to our 2D view up here at the top. We'll deselect the outline and we'll go ahead and select both circles. If you hold down the shift key while you're clicking, you'll be able to click on multiple items. Now for this one, we could do a profile or we can start exploring pockets and that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and change that cup depth to match that 0.175 and I'm going to select my quarter inch end mill. So end mill, one fourth of an inch. Now what a pocket toolpath does is it goes ahead and everything inside this outline, it will just cut out. So as we go ahead and do that and preview that toolpath, you'll see that it will leave us with those holes. And again, it leaves us with the exact size. Now from here, you are ready to go ahead and save your toolpaths and save your file. Let's save the file first. So we're going to go ahead and save this as that CRV 3D so that we can come back and edit it if we need to. And then over here on the side, the uh, right side under our toolpaths menu, we're going to go ahead and save our toolpath. Now with this, make sure that you select both toolpaths. You can also click this little check mark to make sure you've selected them all. And if you did it correctly, they should both have that quarter inch end mill. So they should be both using the same tool. We'll make sure in this drop down that we pick the CNC Shark USB arcs in inches, and we'll go ahead, save that toolpath. Again, I do recommend naming it something like your initial. So in this case, I'm gonna name it JM1 base, and we'll save that. And then from there, I would go ahead and put it onto my flash drive. Don't forget to check the estimate of how long this is going to take. All in all, this is going to take about two minutes uh, or a minute and 30 seconds-ish because it's got 47 seconds for the profile and 30 seconds for the pockets. So it will be very quick on the CNC, which is nice. All right, from here you are heading to the next video and heading into the lab to actually set up that machine. Good luck.